The South Dakota Stories, Volume 5. She used to dread the winter, the cold, driving in the snow. But that was before she started spending it in the right place. Now, wandering the snow puts a smile on her face. And breathing in the landscapes warms her spirit more than any coat. Because if South Dakota taught her anything, it's that it's never too cold to have too much fun. There's so much South Dakota, so little time. Save big this Friday through Sunday at Hy-Vee. 24-pack Pepsi products, just $8.88. Basket and bushel green grapes, just $1.48 a pound. Mrs. Grimes beans or chili beans, only 69 cents. A dozen Hy-Vee large eggs, just 99 cents. Jimmy Dean bacon, just $2.99. And lots of matzo pizza, only $4.99. Get these great deals and more Friday through Sunday, only at Hy-Vee. Some restrictions apply. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. New York is a city of subways. Old, new, in construction, and projected. And of the masses of people who ride them daily, commuting to and from work. This is the story of an old and battle-scarred subway user. And a new spur line opened at last. And as usual, too late to achieve its objective, relieve congestion. But it did bring Alvin Freiburg a strange and wonderful freedom from the grinding daily tragedy of a life not worth living. What's the matter, Al? You got an itch or something? We're getting near 35th and Neely. I'm not passing it again. This subway doesn't stop at that station. Why? How do I know? There's got to be a reason. So how come the conductor doesn't know? It's a brand new line. Call the transit authority. I didn't get a chance. I got to know the truth about it just the same. Here it comes, 35th and Neely. This time I got to know. What, what are you going to do? Stop the train. I'm going to get off. Are you crazy or something, Alvin? Stay away from that emergency. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Phantom Stop, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Freiberg and Marvin Schreiber shared the same treadmill. They both worked for Goldman Incorporated. Al is a pattern maker. Marv is a cutter. They both rode the subway morning and night. They both shared the same two-family house in Flushing, owned by Marvin. But of the two, Marv was the lucky one. When he came home, he came back to love and affection. What Al came home to was, uh, well... That was something else again. Is that you at last, Alvin? Yes, Esther, I'm home. You're late. I'm late. That's all you got to say? What else should I say? I was making hanky-panky with one of the models. Who'll give you even a look? Models I don't worry about, but you and that mob downstairs could have stopped maybe for a beer. Let me smell your breath. <laughs> I wouldn't advise it. I had a garlic pickle with lunch. <laughs> a comedian I married. So why are you late? Oh, Esther, have a heart. We're behind the fall deadline. We've got to get out the garments. Oh, don't give me a story that Fink Goldman's running you into overtime. He'd have a heart attack if he had to pay a dime over take-home pay. Uh, give a little, take a little. A few minutes overtime isn't going to make me run to the shop steward. Give a little, sure. That's the story of your life. When did you take? person makes his own choices. Oh, I want to sit down. I've been on my feet all day. It was just uh, the subway was late. Now the subway don't run on time. I mean, me and Marv, we missed the regular train. Oh, he was working overtime too, huh? No, no. He, uh, he stopped to buy a present for his wife. Mm, it's a pity you couldn't have the same excuse. It's her birthday. You had yours. Don't talk about birthdays and don't sit down. I want you to fix Rebecca's hair dryer. What's the matter with it? Would I ask you if I knew it doesn't work? Well, couldn't she let her hair dry with God's own air for once? But in curlers? She don't mind in the morning. Every time I eat a shredded wheat, I look up at her and think, what am I doing eating one of your sister's curlers? Hey, how come she don't wear her hair straight all the time? 
Eh, nothing helps. Tonight is special. She's going to the community center. She's wasting her time. There isn't a nice boy who isn't already taken. Essie! Is that Alvin at last? Yeah, he just walked in. Well, tell him to run down to the drugstore and get me some glow prune. Couldn't she go down to get it herself all day? All she does is sit. A lumbago is bothering her. Maybe she's just waking up to what she is, a big pain in the... Is he going? I run out of hair set and I'm only half curled. Half boiled is more like it. Is that any way to talk about your own flesh and blood? She's your sister. Are you going down to the drugstore or not? Yes. Yes. Glow prune, right? Yeah, you might as well get the giant can. Then you can fix the hair dryer. should have been a barber. The things I could do with a razor. Come on, come on. Rebecca's waiting. When I get home, can we eat? Oh, just like a man. The only thing on his mind is his stomach. To tell the truth, limping down the drugstore... The only thing on my mind was my sister-in-law. Except maybe my wife. And the razor. <laughs> the things that go through a man's mind, it would frighten you. What you could settle with one simple stroke. All day long at the shop, the boss screams at me. And then at night and weekends, I got my wife and her sister yelling at me. Oh, it's not like it used to be in the old days. With Sarah, my first wife. But Sarah, when I got home, it was altogether different. Hello, Shotzi. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> Come into the living room and sit down. I got your slippers and the paper and a nice glass of tea with a little you-know-what. <laughs> Come on, rest up a little before dinner. Oh, you're such a good wife, Sarah. Oh, what's so hard? I got a good man. Here, darling, sit. Oh, give me your shoes. Now, yeah. well, how's business? Uh, <laughs> well, we'll talk later after we eat. What's for dinner? A favorite. Yes. Ah, uh, what's the difference? Anything you cook is my favorite. I never really realized how much Sarah meant to me until she died. And I married Esther. If Sarah had lived, it would have been... But it would have been just like Marvin and Rachel downstairs. Love, warmth, kids, a real family. I made more money, but he was the one with the life. Oh, Marv was a lucky guy with his Rachel. Say goodnight to the kids, Marv. Yeah. <laughs> They're growing like weeds. Thank God they both look like you. <laughs> oh, go on. Well, sit already and drink your coffee. Where's yours? Right over here. Well, bring it to the sofa and sit with me. Oh, I gotta do the dishes. Come on. The dishes can wait. I'll help later. You got anything in mind, Marvin? The kids aren't that much asleep. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Anytime I look at you, I got something in mind. <laughs> but don't worry. It's not that. It's something else. Oh, what's the matter? You didn't get laid off? No, no, no. Nothing like that. Hey, <laughs> I told you nothing. Else. That's just for love. What did I do to deserve that, huh? Just for being you. Boy, what a lucky guy I am. All right, I wouldn't deny it. Mm. But how come you know it? <laughs> the way we are. And the way Alvin and Sarah used to be before. <sighs> ah, why do some guys get all the breaks and the rest get a kick in the pants? Oh, it was a terrible thing that happened to Sarah. Bad enough to lose your first child. But a wife as well. Remember how it used to be with the four of us when we first moved into this house? Sure, it was a whole family. Two-family house, but one family living in it. Yeah, you, me, Sarah, mm -hmm. Alvin. Dinner every Sunday. One week their turn, next one ours. Times were good. <laughs> Remember the picnics at Jones Beach? Oh, do I? Sarah's potato salad. Nobody could make potato salad like oh, that. Oh, huh? boy. And your pot roast. <laughs> the best. And what a cut-up that Al used to be. He could have been on the stage. What laughs we had. Oh, especially that last time, I remember, with Sarah and me both out here with our kids. And you wanted to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I miss Sarah. You know, I, I try to get on with Esther. Ah, that loudmouth. She'd burn your ear off with nothing good to say about anybody. And the sister's worse. Well, she can't help it if she's got a face that'd stop a horse. She could keep a big nose out of everybody's business. 
What's the matter, Marvin? There's no heat in the house. You want us all to get pneumonia? Mm, she's always sick with something. If it wasn't for Al, I'd find some way to kick him out and get new tenants. Oh, you couldn't do that to Al? No, no. Uh, he's the one who ought to get rid of them. God forgive me for saying it. Well, why shouldn't he? I mean, they deserve it. Not what I was thinking. And what sometimes I think lately Al could have on his mind. What do you mean? You know, knocking off either one of those two old crows ought to be justifiable homicide. Marvin, what are you saying? There never was a kinder or more gentle person than Alvin Freiburg. But you put a mouse in a bowl with a lid on and let him run around trapped. He ever gets that lid off, out comes a raging tiger. I don't know. Maybe it's all the violence, but uh, the... Al worries me these days. How come? He, he daydreams a lot. Gets behind on his work. He drives Goldman frantic. And every so often, I'll see him pick up my cutting shears and just, you know, kind of weigh them in his hand like they were, I don't know, like, 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 like a weapon. What are you suggesting? He's going to turn into a murderer or something? Al Freiburg? Ah, don't make me laugh. But it wasn't something to laugh at. If only Rachel could have known. And Marv was right, though I didn't know he'd said it. These last years, like a hamster in a cage, that was me. Running around and around, going nowhere. I wouldn't mind so much, but... Esther wouldn't have children. Not even a son to carry my name. There are times lately, like when... Abe Goldman is trying to chisel on the patterns. When when I, I, I find myself grabbing up Marv's shears and... Oh, I, I get such a, a pain in my chest. Everything goes black. By the time I see straight again, I'm, I'm worried what I might have done. Or like mornings. I shave with a, with a straight razor, which was my father's. And sometimes, like the morning after Rebecca needed her hair dressing... Uh, yeah. You plan to spend all day in there? I'm shaving. How come you're up so early? The noise you make getting out of bed. Who could sleep? Listen, could you spare the powder room a moment? Well, can't you wait till I'm finished? It isn't me. It's Rebecca. Oh, what's with Rebecca? She's sick to her stomach. Okay, okay. I'll shave in the kitchen. How come you're up so early? Uh, well, today... Today, Marv and I are trying the new subway, which just opened. Just to be on the safe side, we're leaving early. I bet you come home early one of these evenings. Now, what's in it for me? Oh. All right, all right, Esther, don't get mad. Can't I make a joke? Uh, look, you, you want to have a cup of coffee with me before I leave? What for? As soon as I get Rebecca straightened out, I need my beauty sleep. Have your coffee at the office. You used to make it for me when we were first married. I used to do a lot of things before I discovered what a nothing I married. Go into the kitchen, shave, will you, and let Rebecca use the ladies' room. The ladies' room. That's what it comes down to now. I'm a stranger in my own house. I finish shaving, nicking myself twice without a mirror. Then I cleaned the razor and I... I thought about it. How quick it would be. And as long as it was sharp enough, how painless. And then... With a gasp, I thought to myself, for whom? What am I thinking? Me? Them? All three of us? And then all of a sudden, I... All of a sudden, I, I had the pain in my chest, and I... I wondered. Indigestion. Gas. Ah, take a bias out, sir. Finish shaving and get to work, Alvin. So, how do you like it? What? The new subway. Ah, who knows yet? Same sardines packed in a new can. Ah, here you got more room to breathe. Still the same air. You want to call it that. You know, I thought maybe there'd be less people. If a guy could have one wish. What did you say? I said if a guy could have one wish, it would be not to travel Queens to New York and back in the rush hour. Eh, it's not so bad. Count everything else in. For you, maybe. What else have I got to look forward to either end? Al, I've been meaning to talk to you. No, look, not here. You couldn't hear yourself, but everybody else could. Hey. What? Hey, here's a station we're passing. Uh, 35th and Neely Avenue. Hey, 
How come the train doesn't stop? Express, I guess. I didn't see the station. Clear as a nose on your face. I wasn't looking. What's the difference? What could it matter in your life anyways? What could it matter in Alvin Freiberg's life? Not a thing. Just another subway station passed by an express train that didn't stop there. 35th and Neely. From the first moment he read the designation, he knew that sometime he had to get off the subway there. I'll return with Act Two shortly. It wasn't a good day in Alvin Freiberg's life. The patterns for the new styles were hard to work out. Seventy yards of cloth on a bolt. You have to lay out the patterns so that you waste the least amount of material. If you're a first-rate firm, you don't cut corners. But if you're just an ordinary firm and times are hard, there's a little temptation to short change. I can't do it, Mr. Goldman. Are you telling me I brought you up in the business? So we'll be a little tight with the seams. We'll still make up. A little tight? Look, here under the arms and on the sides. A woman buys the wrong size, so she takes a deep breath and the seams go... That's her problem. She should buy the right size to begin with. Why, you know women. That's what always made our line. They could, they could breathe a little buying undersize. Are you telling me how to merchandise? Look, I make patterns. That's all I know. I made them before you were out of public school. I ask you to cut a few corners, and you have to give me an argument. I want only the best for us, Mr. Goldman. The same for me, but we got to go with the time. I don't like to cheat. Who's cheating? We cut a corner here and there. What are you? A conscience for the world? You're better than anyone else? Ah, maybe he was right. What was I? I sat there piecing the jigsaw of patterns on a bolt of cloth, and I... I wondered myself, let some customer lift her arm and split a seam, or eat too much and have the zipper split. Why should I care? What did I have left? No pride at home? Why try to have any at work? Even Marv couldn't shake me while we waited for the subway home. Why'd you knock a lunder? Ah, what's the difference, Marv? He wants to cut short. How can I stop him? It never pays off. And what you lay out, I gotta cut. You know, once you'd have made me mad saying that. But now, what's to fight for? These days, we're lucky to have a job. That's all the business means to you? Tell you the truth, nothing means much to me. I'm tired. You? Well, you got something to protect. There's a seat. Grab it. Come on. Uh, I'll stand. You need it more than me. Now sit down, will you? Uh, okay. Maybe I do. But I, I wanted to ask the conductor or one of the guards about that station. What station? You know, the one we don't stop at. The uh, uh, 35th of Neely. Ah, who cares? Me? Why? I don't know. Just, just something crazy. You wouldn't remember. What wouldn't I remember? Well, I could tell you, but what do I want to do? Broadcast a secret at the top of my lungs? Wait till we're home. Okay, okay. It's hard to hear you anyway. Read your paper. I sat a little while with my eyes closed. The pain was in my chest again. Right through the back. The racket of the subway seemed very far away. And then I, I glanced at the paper in my lap. Just to skip over the headlines. General Charles de Gaulle takes over Premiership of France. Huh? So let him. What do I care? long dead. I look again at the newspaper. The date. June 1st, 1958. I, I, I started to get Marvin's attention, but just then I realized that we were slowing down, ready to stop. I, I twisted to look out the window. 35th and Neely. I, I had to push and shove to get off. I was the only one. I went through the gate. There was a a long flight of steps to the street. But my pain was gone. My legs, they felt 20 years younger. So did all of me. I could feel my heart lift, reach out expecting something. And I was right. I came out to the street. And, well, it was... It was just before sunset. 
everything was bathed in a rosy glow, a color you couldn't forget. And waiting for me was... Alvin, two subways I waited. I thought maybe you'd missed your train. You know the rush hour, Sarah. But why should you wait for me? <laughs> why does any woman wait for her man? <laughs> Love. Besides, I was shopping near here at the market, so why not give you a surprise? <laughs> hey, let me have the bag. Yes, sir. I'll carry it. <laughs> hey, this is... This is the old neighborhood. Why so surprised? 35th, all right. But, uh... Neely, that's not near us. Oh, it's a new subway. So it's a little longer walk than the old stop. What's the difference when a person is young? The way I feel. So, why do we have to stand talking so much? Come on, let's go home. Yeah, home. Yeah, uh, give me your hand. Let's just walk like we used to. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's so good tonight. It, it, it seems so special. Oh, it is special. <laughs> what's for dinner? I shouldn't tell you. I should just surprise you. So? Surprise me. Um, maybe I won't if you sound so indifferent. Who's indifferent? Oh, well, you'll find out anyway. It's strawberry blinces with sour cream. <laughs> you want to leave me for another woman? I want to take you in my arms right here on 33rd Street and hug you. Oh, you better not. I'll call the cops. No, darling, just wait till we get home. You want coffee or, or a glass of tea? I just want you. Come on, sit by me on the couch. Oh. Oh, I'm not sure I could trust you. There's more than one kind of love, Sarah. Uh, this is just old people, quiet, just to touch, to know, to feel that you're there. And, and I'm next to you. Come on, sit. Maybe just a little. Because... You have to go. What do you mean? How come I have to go? Don't ask questions, Alvin. Just take what we got. But this is my home. I'm not leaving. You have to leave. Answer me one thing first. Anything. You won't let whatever happens change you? You'll stay the way you are? Why should I change? Supposing I wasn't alive. Oh, Sarah, then I wouldn't be alive either. Oh, it isn't always that easy to die. Sarah? Sarah, what are you talking about? Just promise me, darling. If anything happens, just... Just keep on being my same, loving, kind, gentle Alvin. What crazy talk is this? I'm... I'm Alvin Freiberg. I'm, I'm 30 years old. If I don't know what I am now, I'm in sad condition. I'm only thinking of the future. Oh, the devil with the future. We're living now. That's just the trouble, my darling. We're not... And I beg you, whatever happens, don't let anything change you between now and... Wake up, Alvin. Hmm? What? Now stop. Uh, uh, we got to uh, get off the what, subway. What, 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 but I already did. I mean, I mean when we stopped at 35th. Come on, come on, Alvin. You've been sound asleep since we left Manhattan. Let's get it out of the sling and on the way... What are you talking about? You got off the subway on the way home. I did. At 35th and Neely. You got a hole in the head. You were asleep by 57th Street, Manhattan, and you never woke up till we hit Flushing. I, I didn't... I didn't get off and see Sarah. Sarah? My wife. She... she... It was a dream. Oh. It was a dream. You were tired. You went to sleep, and you had a dream. Oh, such a dream, Marv. You know, it was so real. Just like it used to be. But... Hey, listen, I, I didn't get off at that station. The train doesn't stop there, Al. It did. In my dream. If it could only be like that. Uh-huh. Uh, could I say something to you which is none of my business? What, a friend like you? You could say anything. I'm worried about you. Yeah. That makes the two of us. I think you should see a doctor. What could a head shrinker tell me that I don't know already? I didn't mean a psychiatrist. I meant a doctor, doctor. Who needs him? I'm healthy. I could be if I had the chance. I was thinking about, you should excuse the expression, your home life. Yeah, you should excuse the expression, all right. Alvin, you ever hear the French painter called Gauguin? Yeah, sure. You know what he did? Uh, he went to Tahiti or somewhere and he, well, he painted pictures. Yeah, but first off, he was a banker. 
and he was unhappy. So he separated from his wife and just took off. Are you trying to tell me something? Yeah. Who likes Esther? Do you? I'm married to her. You were married to Sarah. Yeah. I was different. Sure it was. Everybody loved Sarah. But Esther... Who likes Esther? You gotta say it out loud. Not even me. I wish she was dead. You don't have to go that far. Why don't you just walk out on her? What would happen to Rebecca? That's your problem? They're driving you crazy, the two of them. Rachel and me, we only live downstairs, and they're driving us around the corner. Why don't we all get her up from under? You're not going to renew our lease. Al, Al, I ain't talking as a landlord, but as a friend. Rachel and me, we can make out. But we want to save you. From what? Uh, but we're almost home now. You take a good look at yourself. Do a little thinking. You got a dingling hung around your neck. I'm your buddy. Now, what else can I say? Marv, I don't know what to answer you. I don't blame you. I don't know how I had the guts to say all I said to you. Now, well, see you at 7.30 in the morning. We'll walk to the subway. After Marv went in, I waited a moment in the dark. Sarah... Or was it a dream? I had a crazy notion that... that grew more real as the pain in my chest started up again. That I could go back there. All I had to do was stop the train and get off at 35th and Neely. Except... Except... I had to fix everything right to leave behind. A man can't just walk out on everything like that... that fellow Gogan. He was a genius. I'm just a schlep. I'm shaving. Ten o'clock in the night and you're shaving? I'm coming in. So come in. The door's open. What are you shaving this time of night? Well, uh, the morning traffic uh, gets so heavy, I thought maybe I'd take a load off of it. I don't understand you, Alvin Freiberg. Well, say something. What am I to say? I don't think you ever did. What? You asked me to say something, I said it. I didn't ask to be insulted. Who insulted? You said I didn't understand you. Well... You think you do? Oh, I certainly don't understand a man shaving 10 o'clock at night and tying up the only bathroom in the house. I shave in the morning. I'm in the way, too. What should I do? Shave at the garment house? You don't have to make a thing. Who is making a thing? You are. I was just trying to make things easy. Don't give me that, Alvin. You just try to make things a problem because me and Rebecca haven't ever been good enough for you. Did, did I ever say that? Well, it's what you think. Sarah, she was so great. Your first wife, nobody could live up to her. You leave Sarah out of Who this. brought her in? I didn't. Don't try to fool me. Ever since we were married, you compared the two of Esther, us. Esther, that honestly is not true. Don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. I know what I know. And let me tell you something, Alvin Freiberg. Your first wife was a nothing. If you had stayed with her, you'd still be a gopher for Mr. Goldman running errands, getting coffee, pushing dress racks, a, a 40-year-old office boy without my connections and my family, so don't you ever forget that it. That isn't true. I was a cutter before oh, you were... Don't make me laugh. With that Sarah soft in the head about how great you'd be, she couldn't see a future in any dress cut... Alvin. Alvin, don't hold that razor like that. Alvin, what are you thinking about? Don't you ever mention... Sarah's name to me again. Don't you ever... Alvin, are you crazy or something? I was just trying to bring you to senses. Now, don't take offense about Sarah. Sarah's been dead for 16 years. Get out. Get out. Get out! You, you leave me alone. You and Rebecca, you leave me alone. Or I don't know what I'm going to do. What are you? Are you a crazy man or something? Right at the moment, I'm yes. Yes. What, what made you like You, this? you, you, you and your nagging sister, you get out! For the first time in her life, Esther knuckled under to me. She fled from the bathroom in terror. And as she slammed the door shut behind her, I, I, I stopped in terror myself because I realized that I had advanced on her with the razor in my hand 
held like a weapon. I couldn't kid myself that I didn't want to use it against her and her sister. And, and suddenly, all alone, I, I started to, to shake from head to foot. What had I become? Because I knew that I... I knew that I was near the end of control. And if something didn't happen, I would lose my mind. My mind. And destroy both of these women as surely as they had been destroying me. Day by day. For the last 15 years. The Wrong Marriage. Two selfish women driving against a quiet and simple man. The day-by-day -day deterioration of what had once been a human relationship is as devastating as the Chinese water torture and as inescapable without violent reaction or some miracle to end it. Which is the deciding factor? I'll be back with that solution shortly when I return with Act Three. Save big this Friday through Sunday at Hy-Vee. 24-pack Pepsi products, just $8.88. Basket and bushel green grapes, just $1.48 a pound. Mrs. Grimes beans or chili beans, only 69 cents. A dozen Hy-Vee large eggs, just 99 cents. Jimmy Dean bacon, just $2.99. And lots and lots of pizza, only $4.99. Get these great deals and more Friday through Sunday, only at Hy-Vee. Some restrictions apply. The dictionary definition of tragedy is the downfall or destruction of some great or noble figure because of some flaw or fatal weakness. But surely the fate of a simple man living a life of quiet and utter despair, misunderstood, unappreciated, and starved for a kind of love he had once known is just as tragic. And when he finds himself with his back to the wall, how desperate might he become? Let's watch Alvin Freiberg, who might be you, or I, or any of us who sees no hope of escape. Let's watch him face his problem and find its solution. The next day, I woke up early, even earlier than usual with a gut feeling that I'd reached the end of my rope. Just like any other morning, Esther's snoring like a walrus beside me. Same heavy feeling in my chest. Why should it surprise me? My heart was dead already 15 years. I turned off the alarm clock, checked the time automatically, and went into the bathroom. Half an hour early, I reached for my razor. All of a sudden... I'm thinking, what kind of a fool are you? You shaved already last night. Then I said to myself, Alvin, you know that. So what are you doing with a razor in your hand? I knew I didn't have to ask that question. I was desperate. Who was I kidding? I couldn't face another day the way I lived. Even without hearing them, Esther's snores were sounding in my ears. I could hear Rebecca's whine. What would she have today? An ulcer? Arthritis indigestion? A something which wouldn't have a name? Anything to drive her to a doctor so he could reassure her. Or try to. And the razor. The razor would end all this. I was like a... Like a man walking in his sleep. With the razor in my hand... I walked into the bedroom. Alvin, it's six o'clock. What are you doing up? I, uh, I, uh, I, I, could, I couldn't sleep. What, what's the razor for? You got five o'clock shadow in the morning? Uh, oh, oh, that's the, you know, that's the first joke you ever made. Who cares about jokes this hour? What, what's the razor for? What? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I forgot. I, I shaved last night, I guess. I, well, put I, it away and come back to yeah, bed, huh? Yeah, yes, 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 Esther. I don't know. I don't know what came over me all of a sudden. Well, just come back to bed and don't wake up the whole house. I don't huh? feel sleepy. Maybe I'll, I'll make a cup of coffee, I huh? don't understand you. 
But do what you want. As long as you don't wake up Rebecca and me, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. I don't understand you. It was all there in those two sentences. And the coffee was bitter. No matter how much sugar I dumped in, and so was my life. It's the way a good half of the world, maybe more, live. An hour and a half later, walking to the subway, how different could I feel? Except that Marv was a friend. And with him, I could talk a little. Hey, nice brisk morning, huh? Well, what's a good word? You should know me by now. I wonder you even bother to walk to the subway with me. <laughs> what are you giving me, Al Freiburg? Twenty-five years we're friends. Why would I walk out on you, huh? I ain't the same man I once was. Look, when was the last time you saw a doctor? I don't know, three, maybe four years. You ought to have a checkup. What for? Who cares? Anyway, my regular doctor died a couple of years ago. A person our age should have a checkup once a year. Stay alive? What else? Supposing you get to the point where you don't care, huh? Oh, that pins it. I'm going to make an appointment with my doctor to see you. Don't waste the time. I'm ready to waste more than that. You'll see him if I have to drag you there. We'll go at lunchtime. Don't give me any arguments. I'll pay just for my own peace of mind. Look, Marv. Marv, you're a good friend, okay? Okay. I'll see your doctor, but, you know, he can't help me. And we got one thing straight. I pay. I pay. Come on. Come on over at the subway. Get the ants out of your pants, Al? So we changed it Rolly Plaza to a local. What are you going to do when you get to 35th and Neely? I'm going to get off and go upstairs. We get off? We could be late for work. You don't have to come. Listen, the way you're acting, as a friend, I wouldn't leave you for a minute. I ain't got enough moxie to argue. Anyway, here it comes. How do you know? I can't see. I know. There. There, you see? Ah, we're coming into the station. Yeah, okay, but we're not slowing down. What? Huh? We've got to slow down. This is a local. Some train has got to stop here. Well, maybe there's some other local, but this one isn't going to stop. Marv, there is a station there, isn't there? Sure, sure. It says, it says 35th and Neely, don't it? Yeah, that's what it says. Or said. We're already past it. For some reason, trains just don't stop there. But I told you last night... That I... was a dream, Alvin. I was standing right over you, and we passed right through as usual. You didn't get off. Nobody got off. Whatever this station is, there just isn't a train that stops here. I didn't feel well that morning. My mind wasn't working properly, or I, I might have thought of calling the transit authority. But everything I did was automatic. I laid out my patterns, and then at lunch, I went to the doctor with Marvin leading me by the hand like I was a baby. It was nearly quitting time before I got back from the doctor, and Goldman was fit to be tied. So, what are you going to claim now, Alvin? Seniority? You take almost the whole afternoon off without a word? Well, I, I was to the doctor. Doctor! You couldn't see him on your own time? Maybe it was your head that needed examining. Look what you did here. And your friend Marv already cut, so what can we do? I'm in the factor's hands already. But, but what is it? Mr. Mr. Goldman expected three more dresses out of these bolts of cloth. Didn't I tell you to skimp on the pattern? Oh, I forgot. You forgot. How could you forget with that? Look, I I'm sorry. I went to the doctor and I... don't need a doctor. You'll give me heart failure. The four line is a disaster before we even cut one dress. I might as well end up in bankruptcy. Freiburg, you're fired. I don't want to see you again. You're lucky I don't fire your friend Schreiber. Mr. Yeah. Gold. Don't give me any arguments. All right. It's quitting time. I'm in enough trouble with the union to begin with, so let's close up. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, we won't open again. That's the way things are here. Ah, uh, Marv. Marv, I'm sorry. Forget I... it, forget it. Let's have a fling. Never knows we need a lift. Come on. I'll buy you a drink at Levin's before we take the subway home. Ah, uh, Lechaim. Lechaim. I don't know what I'm wishing you good luck for, the way it goes. Yeah, it don't matter. I'll get the severance pay, some pension. <laughs> and the beauty part, the insurance. 
What insurance? The life insurance. That should take care of Esther and Rebecca. What are you talking about life insurance? You made me see the doctor, huh? So? What did he say? Well, I got a, uh, a something. I ain't sure I know how to tell you. Ventricular filibration. Uh-huh. The doctor wondered I should go in the hospital right away. So why didn't you? Well, I eat up all the money in hospital bills. I'll go home, I'll rest. I haven't got a job anymore. Rest with Esther and Rebecca? <sighs> I'll give it a try. Thanks for the drink. You wouldn't believe, Marvin, a glass of whiskey could make me feel so good. <laughs> Come on, let's go home. Over Marv's protests, we got into the subway. I did feel good. Like I was young again. Like I didn't care. And I had this crazy idea I was going to try. Because the possibility to find out would never come around again. I'm not going to pass it ever again. The subway don't stop at this station. Why not? What do I know why not? There's got to be a reason. So how come the conductor doesn't know? It's a brand new subway, Al. Call the transit system. I never had the chance. Just the same. Here it comes. 35th and nearly. This time I gotta know. Alvin, wait. I gotta know. Why don't the doors open? You can't open these. I'll, I'll get out between the doors. No, wait, wait. Wait, wait Alvin, wait. Oh, hold I... it, Alvin, hold it. Uh, just a minute, mister. What's going on here? You pulled the emergency brake? No, no, it, it was my friend. He wanted to get off here. Why? I, I don't exactly know. Why doesn't the train stop anyway? Well, there's nothing up there but mud flats and an old city dump. Then what's the point of this station? The city is filling in the dump. There's a big housing project going to go up there. Won't be finished for a couple of years, but they'll need to stop then. Come on, we got to pick up your kooky friend. He can't get out of here. It's all blocked up. You going to arrest him? Sure. He could have caused a panic. I got a lot of people hurt. What's the matter with him anyway? I don't think I could explain to you, officer. Except uh, it's his heart. Hello, Alvin. Sarah, you were waiting again. Well, this time I knew what subway you'd be on. My darling, let's go home. That's all I want. That's what you got. This time, for good. See? I told you there was no way out. Oh, what's he... What's he lying there for? He get fits or something? Uh, no, no. He, uh, just hasn't been well lately. What? Hey, you ain't just whistling, Dixie. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, mister, but your friend is dead. Heart attack, huh? Yeah, something like that. I wonder. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, just... I hope he found what he wanted. And, uh, for the record, guard, there's no doubt... It was his heart. Tragedy or something nearer to all of our lives. Escape. Death, of course, is always tragic. But if you have belief in something beyond... Alvin Freiberg, slippers on his feet, Sarah by his side... And something too delectable to name, cooking in the kitchen for dinner, is a happier man dead than alive. I'll be back shortly. It was Elizabeth Barrett Browning who wrote... I love you with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. Alvin Freiberg could never have expressed himself so well, but beyond question, he felt as deeply for his Sarah as Elizabeth Barrett felt for Robert Browning. The quiet, unnoticed ones love as deeply and perhaps more securely than the great or famous let this be Alvin's epitaph and the end.
of his story. Our cast included Norman Rose, Nat Polin, Carol Titel, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. But, John, this is the only time we can call Windan Dingo at midnight. It's the only time he's able to hear the voice of mortal man. And the clock just struck. Listen. He... He's here. That's his voice. Jay, that's just an eagle way off. Listen. Will you go back to sleep? Help. Who's that? Sounds like Enoch Frazier. Get him out of here. He's come to kill me. <sighs> Enoch must be having a nightmare. Enoch does drink an awful lot. Don't kill me. Ah! No, it's Windan Dingo, all right. No, don't, don't, and justice don't. is being done. Well, I, I don't think Enoch's crimes were that serious. Ah! Well, he's quiet now. He's dead. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb-roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild-caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.